Hi, this is another Ask Augustine. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about smooth bow changes and give some tips about that. You're going to encounter sometimes long notes where you have to take two bows on one note or sometimes even three, uh, but you still want it to sound like one note. It's going to happen sometimes with long final notes, like for example the last note of the second movement of the Brahms concerto, but you probably need two bows. But you want it to feel like one sustained note. Sometimes there can also be very loud uh, moments, loud climaxes where you just feel like you don't actually have enough bow, you need to take a second bow. Um, often something like you know, just to have a, be able to go a little faster with the bow, and get more sound out of, out of it. So generally, uh, a smooth bow change is a little easier at the tip, of course. Um, but obviously the first thing you want to avoid is to have you have an attack but the second danger is actually the opposite second danger is that we get so careful about but the boat change that you, then the boat change is actually noticeable because you hear a dip in the sound you actually hear the sound uh, uh, dip away and come back and in that sense it will then still sound like two notes so you actually want to avoid that too ideally a bow change for, for a bow change to sound completely smooth at a distance out in a hall, people will not hear attacks quite as clearly anymore, but they will hear that dip in the sound. You really want to keep you really want to keep the sound level, the, the intensity of the sound completely steady through the bow change. And even do even though you yourself, as you're playing, will hear a little tick as you as you make the boat change, that will actually not really carry the sound of the violin uh, ringing through at exact exactly the same way will, will actually cover that. But you really want to avoid that dip in the sound. Boat changes at the frog are very much the same. That again, you don't want to get so careful that that you do this. Of course, what's hard is to have the control to not give too much, not give too little. I find it very helpful when I'm at the frog to breathe out during the bow change, to breathe in when I'm at the tip, just to kind of balance out the tendency of the bow. Because at the frog, it kind of feels like a lot of weight that we have to handle, so breathing out can, can relax uh, me and give me a little bit more control with the hand. Now about these motions with the wrist. You will sometimes see some violinists uh, go like this and some violinists make like quite a big wrist motion at the frog. So what's best is kind of, it's, it's a question of preference actually, but that the wrist motion in principle is very, very sensible because the idea is that as you're done with, you're finished with the up bow and so basically you're you start the down bow, you can imagine it as maybe originating from the elbow, so like you start dragging the bow down, but your wrist isn't quite done with the up bow yet, so your wrist still goes a little further and then gets dragged along. And that helps smooth out the bow change further, so it's not like uh, you're going this way and suddenly you, you put the car in reverse and it's a sudden, sudden change, it's actually more gradual because Part of your part of you is actually still doing the upbow in it. I find it's helpful not to do very much of that though. When I do it, you can see it's. I do it. You know the fingers that are mostly doing it for me. It's a little bit the wrist, but it's actually quite minimal. And I used to much to do much more of that, but I actually found it harder to achieve control because it was such a big motion. But you have to kind of find your find your own. Find, uh, find out for yourself just how much of that you need so that it's helpful to make the bow change uh, smooth. I hope that's helpful and I'll see you at the next one.